Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Arsalan Farro and I teach physics and math. This video is the continuation of the previous video of trigonometry where in first video I explained how to prove trigonometric identities but in this video we will be discussing how to solve trigonometric equations. Trigonometric equations are not as simple in terms of solving as compared to other algebraic equations. So you have had like different situations like for example if I give you a very very simple algebraic equation which is uh, 2x minus 3 equals 7 and you have to solve this equation so you know that you will just mathematically rearrange it and you will get the value of x. But then you did identify that there are also quadratic equations like x square minus 3x minus 4 equals 0 and when you try and solve this particular equation you will not get just one value of x you can get two different values of x which will satisfy this particular equation and then now we move on to trigonometric equation in which you can have infinite number of solutions you, there are many many different possible values of the variable which will be able to satisfy that particular trigonometric equation but the good thing for us is that we have to only solve these trigonometric equations for a particular range of values so they will be given an interval and we will be solving the trigonometric equation for that particular interval but we still would not be having generally just one solution so we have to just make sure that we account for every single possible value in the range that satisfies that particular equation um, before we start off with solving trigonometric equations um, i would want you to try and learn this particular diagram which tells you a couple of things we we will split the axes into four quadrants and then we're going to have to identify that all trigonometric ratios are positive in the first quadrant be it sine be it cos be it tan but this quadrant this is like the fourth quadrant here only cos trigonometric ratio is positive which definitely means that sine and tan must be negative similarly over here sine is positive and if sine is positive so that means cos and tan must be negative likewise if you look at this third quadrant over here tan must be positive which will mean that sine and cos must be negative so to learn this you can just sort of remember that this is like a word cost so if you go anti-clockwise like this this is like a, if you just look at the initial alphabets of it it will form a word cost probably that will help you learn it one more thing that you have to identify as well or learn is the fact that for first quadrant your angle is equal to alpha alpha is called a basic angle and i will be getting into the detail of that but in the first quadrant your angle would be equal to the alpha itself in the second quadrant it would be 180 minus alpha in the third quadrant it would be 180 plus alpha and finally for the fourth quadrant it is going to be 360 minus alpha so you have to remember that which trigonometric ratio is positive in a particular quadrant and which is negative you also have to remember that what are the individual values of angles in terms of basic angle so um, whenever you're trying to solve a trigonometric equation you have to follow certain steps which means that you have to express the equation in a single trigonometric ratio. I would not be able to solve a trigonometric equation which contains sine and cos together. So I will use some sort of formulas to make sure that there's only one trigonometric ratio, maybe factorization, maybe algebraic rearrangement, something that I'm gonna do to make sure that there's only one trigonometric ratio and not many of them. Um, then I will try and identify the possible coordinates and for this you need to remember that um, which trigonometric ratio is positive and which is negative in a particular coordinate that will help you identify which coordinate you're going to go in then you will find the basic angle and it's again a very simple thing you just use a calculator to find basic angle um, and then you will get the general angles by identifying what are the possible coordinates and 
Um, one last thing, and we will not be using that in the beginning, but you have to sort of know that once you have gotten yourself the journal angles, then the angles that satisfy the equation would repeat at interval of 360 degrees. Like you've gotten one angle, then the next possible angle that can satisfy the equation would be after adding 360 degrees or even after subtracting 360 degrees. So these are both possibilities. You can, you can use both of these possibilities to see if there are more possible answers. So guys, uh, this is going to make more sense when we will try and understand it with the help of examples. Now, let's have a look at this trigonometric equation, which is cos x is equal to negative 0.64. I have to solve this equation and all the examples that we are doing right now, they have to be solved in the interval of 0 degrees to 360 degrees, which means you have to identify all possible answers within this interval and that will satisfy this particular equation. I'll follow the steps. First of all, I would see that cos x equals negative 0.64. So I will identify where cos is negative. So if I recall C a s t this tells me that cos is positive in first and fourth quadrant and hence in second quadrant and third quadrant cos should be negative i will identify these quadrants then i will recall that here the angle should be 180 minus alpha and over here the angle should be 180 plus alpha then i will find out the basic angle basic angle is just simply putting the value in the calculator but just make sure of one thing that whenever you plug this value in the calculator if it is positive then put it as it is but if it is negative then you have to first discard or remove the negative sign and then plug it in the calculator the only purpose of this negative sign or if there had been a positive sign was to identify the possible quadrants once I've done that, I will not be using these signs anymore. So to find the basic angle, which I'm representing by alpha over here, I will just take the cos inverse of 0 0.64 and not negative 0 0.64. Once I will take the cos inverse, I'll just use my calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in the correct mode. Mostly students do make mistake in this. So if you're solving in degrees, right now we are solving equations in degrees. So you make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So once you will find out this basic angle by putting cos inverse of 0.64 in the calculator, then you will identify that your second quadrant answer would be 180 minus alpha. That is going to be 180 minus 50.2 and that's 129.8. And similarly, for the third quadrant, it's going to be 180 plus alpha. In this case, it's going to be 180 plus 50.2, and that comes out to be 230.2. So these are the two angles which will satisfy this particular equation. And there was one more thing that I was trying to tell you earlier on, which was that they repeat after an interval of 360 degrees. So if I get my answer as 129.8, I must know that my another answer would be 129.8 plus 360 degrees. The reason I'm not going to be accounting for that because that will go outside the interval that I have to get my answers in. So here I will not consider, but I'll keep my eyes open for a possibility where I'll get my answer that I can be adding 360 degrees or I can be subtracting 360 degrees, making sure that my answers are lying within the specified interval of the question. Moving on to the next example, it's pretty similar. I would look at this equation, which is tan x is equal to 2.5, and then I'd identify that tan is positive, so I will mark the quadrants, first quadrant and third quadrant. Then I will recall that in first quadrant, the angle is going to be alpha, and in third quadrant, it's going to be 180 plus alpha. Then I'll take inverse of 2.5, tan inverse of 2.5, I'll get my angle as 68.2 and that is my basic angle. Since I have to get the journal angle for first quadrant answer, it will be 68.2 as it is. And for the third quadrant, it is going to be 180 plus 68.2. That comes out to be 248.2. 
Similarly, if I look at this particular example, this is sine x equals negative 0.3. Since sine is negative and I know by recalling the CAST, I know that sine is positive in first and second quadrant. Since sine is negative, so my possible quadrants would be third and fourth. And I will also recall that in third quadrant, it's going to be 180 plus alpha. And in the fourth quadrant, it's going to be 360 minus alpha. So I will take sine inverse of 0 0.3. It's an important point that you will not consider the negative sign while putting the value in the calculator. So once you've gotten the basic angle as 17.5, you will get the answer for the third quadrant. That's going to be 180 plus 17.5. And you will get the answer for the fourth quadrant. That should be 360 minus 17.5. And you will get your answers. Moving on, considering another example, sometimes you might have to do a bit of an algebraic rearrangement. You have to solve it for x. So you make cos x is equal to 3 over 5. It is positive. So you pick the first and the fourth quadrant. Recall that first quadrant is alpha and fourth quadrant is 360 minus alpha. Take inverse of 3 over 5, get the basic angle, and your first answer is going to be 53.1 as it is and the other answer is going to be 360 minus 53.1. Now, moving on, um, there is one more thing. Now, with this example, we have to sort of identify that in the initial phase, we will be solving this equation for x minus 30. We will get the answers of x minus 30, and then finally, we will uh, rearrange it to get the value of x. So one more thing that you would have to do in these kind of situations is that whatever interval is given to you, you will change it to the interval of this angle. So since you have to solve it for x minus 30, so I'm going to throw out this entire inequality. I'm going to subtract 30 with every term. 0 minus 30 becomes minus 30. This becomes x minus 30, which is how I wanted it to be. And 360 minus 30 becomes 330. So once I have this specified interval, this is something that will help me to identify that I have to keep my answers within the limit of minus 30 and 330. Moving on, I got the basic angle. This is one of the standard values. Probably I don't even need to use calculator, but cos is positive, so it should be first and fourth quadrant alpha and 360 minus alpha. I got 45. So my one answer is going to be 45 and my other answer is going to be 360 minus 45. But do not forget this basic angle is of x minus 30. So these values that I've obtained, they are not of x, they are of x minus 30. And then I'm going to rearrange these to get the values of x. And these are going to be my answer. You can check that these values are going to be in the interval of minus 30 to 330 and your final answer should be which is the answer of x should be in the interval 0 to 360. Now looking at another example where the angle is even more complicated but I still have to stick to the basics I know I have to solve it for 2x minus 40 and uh, the interval that's given to me of between 0 and 360 degrees is for x. So I'm going to multiply this entire set of inequality by 2, and then I'm going to subtract 40. So I will get the interval from minus 40 to 680 for 2x minus 40. So that is going to be my range of acceptable answers. Um, I will know that cos is positive, so I'm going to mark my quadrants as first and fourth. I will recall myself that first quadrant answer is alpha and fourth quadrant answer is 360 minus alpha. After doing that, I'm going to take the cos inverse of 0 0.8, which is 36.9. This will give me the basic angle. So my answer for the first quadrant is going to be alpha as it is, which means my one answer is going to be 36.9. Please do not make a mistake. This 36.9 is not the value of x. You are right now solving it for 2x minus 40. This basic angle is also for 2x minus 40. So this answer of general angle that we got is not for x, but it is for 2x minus 40. And then for the fourth quadrant, it is going to be 360 minus 36.9. That comes out to be 323.1. 
So I have these values of 2x minus 40 and I can easily quickly rearrange them to get the value of x. And these are my answers. But there is one more thing. I multiplied it by 2 and I have a bigger interval over here. So I have to also see that if I will consider this value of 2x minus 40, the interval is still 680. So there is a possibility that I may add 360 degrees and I'll still be lying in the interval. So I will try that out. I'll see if that's possible. When I added 360 to 36.9, it became 396.9, which is lying in the specified interval. And hence, that is also going to be my one of the acceptable answers. Likewise, if I will take 181.6 so I will just check if I will add 360 it just slightly moves outside so that's not that it comes out to be more than 680 you can check it through calculator but when I subtract 360 from 181.6 that gives me minus 36.9 which is within the specified interval because you can take any value greater than minus 40 and minus 36.9 is bigger than minus 40. So these are also the two equations which will give me the answer to the required equation. So I will again, once I have spotted these answers, these are the answers of 2x minus 40. So I'm going to rearrange it, add 40 on the other side, divided by 2, and hence I will get the values of x as well, which is coming out to be 218.5 degrees and 1.6 degrees. A common mistake in this kind of question would be that students would just solve it for two values of x and leave their answers. But here, there are four answers which will satisfy this equation. There's another approach to look at it, which a lot of people don't really like, but some students also do prefer that, where what you can do is that you can make the interval on the coordinate axes. So you know that your interval starts from minus 40, and then it goes all the way to 680. So you will know that this is your entire interval. So you added 360, you came here, and then you added 360, you came here as well. And then once you would do that, then after that, what you're gonna do is that you will draw the lines in the first and fourth quadrant because it was satisfying first and fourth quadrant um, with the basic angles. And the intersections here are going to be your answer. So you can also check this is going to be 0 plus 36.9, this is going to be 360 plus 36.9, this is going to be 0 minus 36.9, and this is going to be 360 minus 36.9. So you can get different possible values by having this uh, diagrammatic approach as well, where you can see all the possible answers. Moving on with examples, let's have a look at another example where we have 4 sine x cos x is equal to cos x to be solved. Another one important thing that I would want to highlight here is the fact that I can solve trigonometric equations with only one trigonometric function. So I have a sine here and I have a cos here. So I will have to obviously do some sort of manipulations to that so that I can have one trigonometric function. One more very common mistake associated with this kind of an example is that students would cancel out the cos x. And they will cancel out the cos x because you, I mean that's not a mathematically incorrect process you can cancel the factors out but by doing this you will miss out on possible correct answers it's more like if I have to solve an equation x square is equal to 2x so if I have to solve this equation I can cancel x and I can say x is 2 but I would not be very algebraically correct with that. I should factorize it, write it down as x minus 2 so that I know that x is equal to 0 is also one possible answer. If I had cancelled the x out, then I would miss out on that possible correct answer. Likewise, I can't cancel the cos x out. I will shift the cos x on the other side of the equation and then take cos x common. And then cos x would be equal to 0 and 4 sin x minus 1 would also be equal to 0 that solves as sin x is equal to 1 over 4. So I have to solve this equation as well as this equation. One another thing I have achieved by doing this is that I have both single trigonometric ratios so I can directly plug them in to calculator. So if I do cos inverse of 0 I get my answer as 90 degrees. 
and if I do sine inverse of 1 over 4 I get my answer as 14.5 degrees so simultaneously you would have to solve two different equations now um, since the basic angle is 90 degrees you might be wondering that uh, how would I associate a sine with it it's zero and it does not have any sign it doesn't have positive it doesn't have negative um, don't worry much about it because then you would also realize that if you will even consider it in the first quadrant and take it 0 plus 90 or you consider it in the second quadrant and take it as 180 minus 90 you still fall at the same position so since you can't associate signs but the thing is that it doesn't even matter here Likewise, if you will look at 180 plus 90 or you will look, three, look at 360 minus 90, it still lies in the same line. So it still will end up being at the same position and you would not have to worry much about that. And hence, I will know that my one answer is going to be 0 plus 90. I, as I said, I could also take it as 180 minus 90, but still that simplifies to 90. And likewise, the other answer could be 180 plus 90 or 360 minus 90. Either ways, it simplifies to 270 degrees. So that will be answer to this part of the equation. But there's another part of the question that also needs to be solved. It's pretty simple now that it's in the first and second quadrant. I because sine is positive, so my one angle is going to be alpha itself, and the other angle is going to be 180 minus alpha. Overall, I will have four possible answers to this question two because of cos x being equal to zero and two because of sin x being equal to one over four i will continue on and let's have a look at another example where i have a disguised quadratic equation it means it's a quadratic equation but it's a quadratic as a function of um, x so what i'm going to do is don't worry much about it i can just suppose sine square x as s I can name it anything, I'm just supposing an S, and that becomes a simple quadratic equation to solve. I can break the middle term, factorize it, and get myself two answers. And once I get my, and you know that once I have simplified it for S equals minus half, so S is basically sine x, so I got myself sine x equals minus half and sine x equals one. And then, just like before, I'm gonna solve it with this equation as well as with this equation. So if I solve it for negative half, sine is negative in third and fourth quadrant. So it's going to be 180 plus alpha and 360 minus alpha for third and fourth quadrant. Got the basic angle and please, please, please do not forget that when you take out the sine inverse, you will discard the negative sign. This negative sign is only meant to help us to identify the quadrant. Likewise, I'll take sine inverse of one, and that's coming out to be 90, and you will realize that sine is positive, and in first quadrant, whether you take zero plus 90 or you take 180 minus 90, you still fall at the same value. So there's only one possible answer for this particular equation. Moving on, um, having a look at another example, this is similar to the previous question, I'm gonna have to simplify and factorize it. I replace tan x by the identity sin x over cos x, then I cross multiplied cos x on the other side, and then when I shift this on the left hand side, because again, do not cancel these out. That is not mathematically incorrect, but that gives you not all the answers of the equation. So once I will rearrange, shift it on the other side, take sine x common, I will get myself two equations. Now this also highlights one more thing, like first of all sine x is zero and I know that basic angle is zero and I don't know which quadrant to take because there is no sign associated with it, but it really doesn't matter. If I take first quadrant zero, it'll be the same point. If I take fourth quadrant zero, it'll be still the same point. Or if I take second and third quadrant, it'll still be the same. But there is one more important thing that we should not forget that the question said you had to get your answers zero till 360 degrees. So that means there is no equal to sign here and you are not supposed to be taking the boundary values. So this is excluding zero and 360 degrees. So even if I will look here and I see that I have possible answers at zero and 360 degrees, I am not going to be considering them. So my only answer for this part of the equation is going to be 180 degrees. 
if the question had stated my interval of 0 to 360 degrees inclusive, then I would have to write down two more answers for this, which is going to be 0 as well as 360 degrees. Moving on, I have another equation, 2 cos square x minus 1 equals 0. I can rearrange it, and that also sort of highlights one more important thing, that when I take a square root, I will recall that whenever I take a square root, I get a positive and a negative sign. This tells me that for this particular trigonometric ratios, I have angles lying in all four coordinates, two because cos is positive and the other two because cos is negative. So I just have to get all four coordinates answer. Basic angle is coming out to be 45. This is a standard value, but you can also check it through calculator. This is gonna come out as 45. So you would do first quadrant 45, second quadrant 180 minus 45, third quadrant 180 plus 45, and fourth quadrant 360 minus 45. So there are one, two, three, four, and five possible answers to this particular one. Moving on, having a look at another example, um, this is also similar disguised quadratic equation with the use of one trigonometric identity because I have cos and sine. I'm not good to go with this equation, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to replace cos square with 1 minus sine square, and then as it becomes a disguised quadratic equation, I'll substitute sine x as sine, and then I'm going to solve it for sine x. I'll get two possible answers for this one, and I will get one possible answer for this one as well, and that's going to be my range of acceptable answers. Similarly, I if I look at this particular example, I have... 2 sine x cos x and I have cos square x so it's not something really good I'm, I'm not able to sort of factorize it as well because of a 1 on the other side had it been 0 then I could obviously take cos x common but I can't do that here so to sort of try and simplify this up I will think of using a trigonometric identity though in the beginning it might not seem to be very very helpful but once I use that trigonometric identity I realize that this one that was sort of bothering me in terms of factorization cancels out and once it cancels out now i can take common and make two equations out of it also one more thing the other equation still is not a single trigonometric function but please be aware of this situation it comes quite often an exam where uh, you have to rewrite it as tan x you shift sin x on the other side and then you divide sin x by cos x that simplifies to tan x then you will solve it this equation for sine x equals 0 and then you will solve this equation tan x equals 2 for first and third quadrant and you will get your answers. Similarly as I was just saying if you have sine x and cos x then you can always rewrite them as sine x over cos x as tan x so similarly you do uh, that over here as well. This cos of x plus 40 would divide on the other side 4 would come over here and this simplifies as tan of x plus 40. There's one more thing about this question, which is that you have to solve it for x plus 40. So you'd also identify the range for x plus 40, which is going to be um, not 0 to 360 degrees, but 40 to 400. I'll get my basic angle, that's 36.9. I'd identify this as positive. I'll identify this as positive, and uh, since it's positive, it should be first and third quadrant. Well, when I get my answer of x plus 40 in the first quadrant, which is 36.9, that is basically not in the range because 36.9 is less than 40. So I always have to keep my eye towards the range of interval given. If the answer is not in the range, obviously that will be discarded and not considered as one of my answers. Although 36.9 is going to be discarded, but if I add um, 360, to 36.9 that still falls within inside the interval. So I'm going to consider this answer. My other answer is going to be 180 plus 36.9. That is in the range. So I'll just simplify it and get my answer. The important takeaway from this example was that the original answer that I got in the first quadrant was not in the range. But I have already told you that if you have any particular value, you can add 360 to get another answer which is in the interval or you can always subtract 360 to get another answer which is in the interval here adding 360 worked for us now moving on if i look at this another example i still have to use a uh, uh, trigonometric identity over here i replace tan x by sine x over cos x then i will have sine squared x which is a good sign for me because I, as I said, I needed to have one trigonometric ratio so I can replace sine square by one minus cos square. It becomes a disguised quadratic equation. I can take cos x as c and then solve it for cos x. 
I'm getting cos x equals half and cos x equals negative 2. For sine and cos trigonometric ratios, one is sine is perpendicular over hypotenuse. Perpendicular has to be always shorter than hypotenuse. That's why sine ratio always has to be less than 1. Similarly, cos x is base over hypotenuse. So if base is, has to be less than hypotenuse, so cos ratio would always be less than 1 as 1. That doesn't apply to tan ratio. Tan ratio can take any value. So here, this is not a possible trigonometric ratio. This can never be solved. It will not give you a possible solution, even if you try it out with your calculator. But you should be able to recognize that sine x and cos x would only be in the range from negative 1 to uh, positive 1. So I solved it, like I solved it for cos x equals half and its first and fourth quadrant. I got my basic angle is 60 degrees and then first quadrant is 60 and fourth quadrant is 360 minus 60. That simplifies to 300. Um, sometimes I can get these kind of equations which are slightly more trickier to solve. But then again, it's uh, an equation that if you will simplify, you would be able to factorize it. It's, you can still break the middle term and factorize it. So I have suppose sine x is s and cos x is c. That makes it easier to look at this equation. I broke the middle term, I factorized it, and it got factorized into two factors, which can be written down as sine x over cos x, and that becomes tan x. So in fact, I mean, once I would realize that, I would also be able to identify that I just have to solve two equations of tan. This is positive, it should be first and third quadrant, and this one is negative, so it should be second and fourth quadrant, and hence I would be able to get myself the values of x. There might be situation where I have to solve an equation, but the range is not from 0 to 360 degrees, and I may need to adjust to that accordingly. Um, here the range is minus 180 to 180, and I have to solve this trigonometric equation just to the basics. You will rearrange this equation, you will get sine x as plus minus 1 over root 2, you will get basic angle is 45 degrees, you know your answers in, are in all four quadrants, you get your answer as 45, second quadrant 180 minus 45, third quadrant 180 plus 45, and fourth quadrant is 360 minus 45. 180 plus 45 is clearly not lying in the interval that exceeds 180 and 360 minus 45 also exceeds 180 so that also not lies in the range. So if you have any value not lying in the range you will discard it but you will also check if adding 360 degrees or subtracting 360 degrees gives me any possible answer. In this case yes it does if I subtract 360 degrees minus 135 is in the interval or if I subtract 360 from 315 negative 45 is also in the interval so these are going to be my four acceptable answers have a look at another example where I have to solve it for sine 2x and once I have to solve it for sine 2x and the interval is given from minus 180 to 180 so I will find the interval for 2x that should be minus 360 to 360 so I have um, to find the basic angle, if I find out the basic angle for sine inverse of root 3 by 2, that comes out to be 60 degrees. Sine theta is positive in first quadrant, so one answer is 60. In second quadrant, so one answer is 180 minus 60. Now, once I have gotten myself these two answers, I would also see if there is a possibility, because my range is now minus 360 to 360, so I would also see if there are more possible answers. So when I subtracted 360 from 60, I got a possible acceptable answer for 2x because that is within this interval. And also similarly, when I subtracted 360 degrees from 120 degrees, I got another answer which is in the specified interval. These do not also forget, that's also a very common mistake, that these values that you've gotten, you were throughout solving the equation for 2x. Since you've solved it for 2x, now you can just divide every value by 2, and hence those are going to be your answers to the values of x. This is also a very similar example, still starting with the same range, minus 180 to 180, but I am solving it for 2x plus 10. First I multiplied by 2x, then I added 10 on both sides. Then I added 10 on both sides, and after adding 10, this is the interval I have to get my answers of. The answers that I'm going to get in the beginning are going to be of 2x plus 10, and then I'm going to have to solve it for x. So I took inverse of tan. So I took tan inverse of 2. I got 63.4. 
again i discarded the negative sign because negative signs we don't take when we find out the basic angles so i've got myself the answer in the second quadrant i've gotten myself the answer in the fourth quadrant but i will also try if i will subtract 360 and i get my answer within the interval i was getting an answer in the interval and similarly over here when i subtracted 360 degrees i still got another answer in the interval all of these four values are the values of 2x plus 10 and then i'm going to rearrange them to get the values of x and these are going to be my final answers of x now for another example i have even a bigger interval to work with i have sine x equals negative half so what i'm going to do is that i will first of all identify or recognize the quadrants which are going to be third and fourth i'll get the basic angle and then I will get my answers for third quadrant as 210, 180 plus 30, and for fourth quadrant 360 minus 30. But I also have to identify that the variable that I'm solving for has a very, very wide acceptable range. So I do try other possibilities out, subtracting 360 degrees gave me another answer in the interval, adding 360 degrees also gave me another answer in the interval. And same applies to 330, subtracting 360 and um adding 360 so all of these are going to be my acceptable answers so guys thank you so much uh, that's uh, it about solving trigonometric equations and um, um i will also uh, put the link in the description for to download these notes and so work solutions and also uh, to download the worksheet um, I hope you liked the video. If it was helpful, kindly subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and uh, do like.